Hello and welcome to section one, episode 25 of the LUFC Fan Zone podcast. I'm Sam Isles. And I'm Jack Ellis. In each episode, we'll be talking to our next Leeds United player or manager about their time at the club. Last episode, we spoke with former Barcelona and Chelsea midfielder and the founder of D20 sports agency, Deco, about his time as a football agent. One of Deco's most valuable clients is Leeds' new sign, Rafinha, someone who, in my opinion, has had a fantastic start to life in the Premier League. And if anything, too good because he's already getting linked with a move away from Mellon Road at the end of the season. We asked Deco about the possibility of Rafinha making the switch away from Leeds after just one year. And to be honest, I wasn't really convinced by his answer. Were you the same, Jack? Yeah, we're getting a bit of mixed signals from him, really. Uh, I'm sure anyone who would have listened to the podcast would probably agree with us on that bit, that you know what he was saying wasn't that convincing. But at the same time, I wouldn't really expect him to, to give out everything to us. Yeah, I mean, Lucky was saying that it, was, it, like, it wasn't the time to talk about transfers and that the wait till the end of the year, which... If you contrast that to uh, Javier Fleury from the previous episode before Deco's comments. Fleury definitely said that Mesley were going to stay, but Deco were like sort of leaving it more open, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, he was kind of, not to say like he was a bit indecisive with his answers, but he wasn't really giving too much away, which like I said before, I don't really expect him to be giving everything away. But like I said, he was, he was a very really nice guy. Yeah, he, he, was, he was nice. And like you said, he's... He's not going to give everything away, especially with the possibility of some of the biggest teams in England lurking around Rafinha. And as well as Deco's comments about the possibility of him leaving at the end of the season, I was also surprised about what he said about when Rafinha joined Leeds because Deco seemed just as surprised as the Leeds fans and the Wren fans about his departure from France to come to Leeds, especially the price that Leeds also paid, which... Deco himself confirmed was less than Wren's paid just the year before. And he was obviously very complimentary about Leeds and how Victor Orta completed the transfer. But it was interesting to hear about his departure from Wren's, which Deco suggested, which was sort of against Rafinha's will and something which the transfer sort of came out of the blue. Yeah, well, Deco, he was, he was talking about how Wren were a club which went through a lot of boardroom changes, I think, because that's... That, that, that those were his words. Yeah. Like even when Leeds announced the sign, and it was always going to be a weird one because obviously Wren qualified for the Champions League this this season, currently this current season, and to sign a player who previously signed for the for for, for Wren the following year. What 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 fee did he sign for Wren again? I think twenty twenty one million. I think it was twenty one million. Twenty one million pounds. Twenty one million euros. Wasn't it? Something yeah, like yeah. That. Give give or take that amount, but. I mean, even Deco said it as well. He was one of Ren's best players that season. And for them to sell him at a loss is a bit of a question mark, do you know what I mean? Which even he didn't know the answer to. But he also said that other clubs are interested in him as well. I think he said that clubs from Italy was interested as well. So, I mean, we could have pushed him on which clubs that was, but it's a bit late now. But, you know, uh, he's our player for how long, I don't know. But he's going to make the most of it and enjoy the football he plays for Leeds United. Yeah, and hopefully it's for longer than this season, which which we, everyone at Leeds obviously hopes. And if you haven't had the chance to listen to that previous episode with Deco and what he had to say about Rafinha, or if you've missed any of our other shows, they're all available on Spotify, YouTube and Apple Podcasts simply by searching the LUFC Fan Zone podcast. Just before we go into today's show, today's episode is sponsored by the Mystery Football Kit Co. So the guys over at Mystery Football Kit Co have reached out to us and happily agreed to sponsor the podcast and support us as a small business ourselves. Uh, they are Leeds fans and what they are offering is a Mystery Football Kit Box. And if you're not sure what a Mystery Football Kit Box is, it's the opportunity to get your hands on a shirt you might not have got before. It's from any team, from any time, including this season as well, all over the globe. All you have to do is select your size on their website as well as any kits or colours you don't want to feature in your mystery box. So obviously you'll be selecting no red kits in that category straight away. And your very own mystery shirt will arrive on your doorstep and you won't know what kit you've received until you open up. All of their shirts are hand-picked to each order and every item is of high quality and I must emphasise as well, genuine, brand new football shirt from either this year or any previous year from any club around the world. And because of our partnership, as well as the fact that we like to look out for our listeners, if you enter the code LUFC Fanzone at checkout, you'll receive 10% off your order. So make sure you head over to Mystery Football Kitco on Instagram or www.mysteryfootballkitco.com 
to check them out and make sure you add the discount code LUFC Fan Zone at checkout. But on to today's show, and this week, for the first time, with a current Leeds United player, however, someone who's currently out on loan in Spain and away from Ellen Road. After arriving from the Polish third division, aged just 17, he began life in Leeds' under-23 side. However, after immediately impressing, he was moving to Leeds' senior side and is the youngest player to feature in Leeds' first team during Marcelo Bielsa's tenure, when he made his debut in the League Cup against Stoke City at the start of last season. As far as Douglas and gets it away to Harrison, and Harrison is into the area, cuts back, and it's a goal! Matthias Bogus, the 17-year-old, has got a goal for Leeds United, and they take the lead nine minutes in. That's right. This week, we're delighted to be joined by Leeds United midfielder, Mateus Bogus. Mateus, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, no problem for me. Just before we start speaking to you about your time at Leeds, you're currently out on loan in the Spanish Segunda, which is the Spanish second division with Lagrones. How are you finding your time out in Spain so far? Is is it going as you would have hoped? Yeah, it's it's good. Now I have a maybe not so problem, but on the start I play everything. And now we start losing, so they try to find another option. And but I know then it's this time, and I need to work. And I think I back to the squad. But yeah, I feel good, and I feel I feel good also when I play. So yeah, it's going like I hope before. And we wish you all the best with the rest of the season, of course, and hope that you return to Leeds at the end of the year, ready for the Premier League and being yeah, a Leeds United. So. <laughs> fingers crossed. And you've been a Leeds United player yeah. now for two years. And you joined the side in January 2019 from the Polish third division, a league that you were playing regularly, despite just only being 16 and 17 years old. So would you be able to give us a little bit of an insight to your career at that time and maybe the standard that you were playing at? Because, I mean, no disrespect in saying this towards Polish football, but most Leeds fans won't follow Polish football or maybe even the third division of Polish football. So how was that like for you? Yeah, it's true because the the Polish league maybe is not popular like English football. But yeah, when I have 16 or 17, I start playing uh, second uh, division in Poland. And after we unlucky go down to third division. But yes, I play everything there and I feel uh, very good. I show what I can. And that's why I have, uh, I think the elites find me and want me sign. So I was, I was very funny and was very, maybe not surprised, but you know, was the big team. Called to me, so I was a little surprised, you know. Then, uh, then I come, come to the Leeds from the fifth division of Poland, but I, I was very exciting and really want go there. Yeah, just like you said, you know, although you were sixteen and, and in your first full season of professional football, you were given the number ten at your old club, Rus Chorzow, and I apologize if I pronounce that incorrectly. I, I take, <laughs> I take uh, myself number 10. They don't give me, you know. I have some problem with this, but <laughs> we're going good after. <laughs> oh, really? Well, you gave yourself the number yeah. 10. And because of that and your yeah. ability, did you always have the ambition to move away from Poland? Did you always have your sights on whether it be English football or any of the other major domestic leagues? Uh, yeah, before I before I sign which list, I have uh, some uh, offers from other club, And I... Before the when I joined the Leeds, I was in Brighton, uh, I was in Freiburg in Germany, and I also was in Leeds. And after I speak with my family and with my agent, and we take a decision, then we join today because we think then is the best option for me. And I think was was the best option I can say now because I when I after these two years I improved a lot under uh, Marcelo Bessa. But uh, this uh, was a hard decision because I was very young and, you know, when I come into the England, I, I, the, when I come in, I have 17, so I can't live myself in the flat. I live with English family, English parents. So the first six months or seven was, was going uh, maybe not too hard, but was, I was a little surprised because, you know, in Poland, I, I go on the training, uh, I can speak Polish with the teammates. After, you know, I have friends in my city and in Leeds was a little difficult for me because I go to the training, I back, I back to home and oh, what I can do now, you know. 
but I, yeah. I, I adapt to this situation. Uh, this after six months, this, this six months was was going hard, but I know then this helped me to 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 improve my mentally, you know, the ment- with my with my head helped me uh, mental situation. I don't know how to say this correct, but you know what I mean. Guys, eh? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just going back to when you did move to Leeds, like you said, there was a few other clubs interested in you, like Brighton and a few others around Europe. But when were you first aware of Leeds' interest? And when did you first hear about Victor Arta and Leeds wanting to bring you over to England? I don't know, because I think Leeds want me sign in uh, in summer and Brighton also, but I don't have the... Uh... The, the my my before club don't don't want let me go, and they say it's not this time to go. And I I wait another six months, and I think Leeds and other club follow me. And after in the in the winter before when I was in Leeds, I was in Leeds four days, and I speak with Victor Orta and the and the other guy who was on the on the meeting. They show me everything what what they like. They show me everything what they don't like also, mm-hmm. and. And I see then they really want me to sign because when I was in other club wasn't wasn't the same. So that's why I I decided and then I then I joined the lead. Yeah, so like you said, there was Brighton and maybe a few others, but is the reason why you joined Leeds because you felt that Leeds wanted you the most as opposed to the other clubs that were also interested? Yes, yes, I I, I think I think like that and also. I hear from uh, from Victor Orta and Marcelo Bersa also want me. So this is for me very interesting. Then the first team coach know me, know how I play, know who I am. And on the other club, was no one say me this, you know. Uh, here I have a plan and I joined first to the under-23. And after, when I will be good, will be improving, I can uh, start training with first team. And, and it was like that. This was very important. And I can... I have a plan, and not not just to the under twenty three, but for me, I was hoped that I can, you know, contact with the first team. Once again, obviously, no disrespect for the Polish football and the third division. However, did you know when Leeds first became aware of your talent and how they first started scouting you? Because to give credit to Leeds, like to scout the third division of Polish football and to find such a talented young player like you, must have taken a lot of good scouting. Yeah, I've maybe I think they 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 see me first on national team, or really to be honest, I, I don't know where where Leeds see me first time, but I think they see me on the national team, and after they maybe start follow me and see me on the in the third league in the division, maybe they watching some games. That's why they start asking about me. Like Sam said, you arrived in Leeds in January 2019. But what were your first impressions of Leeds, its stadium and even its training facilities and the city as a whole? Because I can imagine it was quite different to what it would have been like in Poland. Yeah, to be honest, everything surprised me because, you know, in Poland we have uh, one stadium and one, a stadium and one pitch to the training. Uh, when I come to the Leeds, the, the, the stadium is in the other place, the training ground is the other place. I go to the training ground, there there was eight pitches, uh, seven natural, two synthetic, you know, is in Poland, maybe one team has something similar to this, but it's not exactly the same, you know. So everything was surprising. Like you said, you arrived in England age 17, which is obviously a very young age to make a big move like that to another country. And because of that, did you ever find it hard to first settle in at Leeds because of maybe the language difference, the new lifestyle? Or you yes. know, obviously you moved away from your family and everything. So how did you find that initial move? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it was hard on the start because when I come to England, I, on the English, I can just say good morning and thank you, you know. So mm-hmm. it was hard to me when I come in, when I came to the club and I sit on the changing room and I won't say something, but I can't because, you know, I can't speak English. But mm-hmm. it was also good than the first team players and the other helped me a lot. And maybe... Maybe for him, for for them, it was nothing. But just the normal asking, "How are you? How is going?" or something like this is good because when you come to the league and the first team players play Champions League a lot of game or Premier League, speak with you is is very good for the young players. You know, 
And also I have lucky because it was Kamil Miazek and my first click I speak Polish a little bit. So it was good. And also this, this helped me. And when you did arrive in Leeds, you were slotted straight into Carlos Corbran's under-23 side as opposed to the Leeds United first team or under-18 side, which you were both eligible because you were still under-18 at the time. And when you joined Leeds, were you aware that you'd be starting in the under-23 side or did you arrive not knowing which side you'd be in? Before, uh, when I was on the meet, before starting uh, with Leeds, was a plan. Then I started with under-23, so I know then I'm coming to the under-23. And they don't say how how long I will be there, or because they they can say they they can say me this because it's depend of me. But I know then I then I came and I started with under twenty three. And the under twenty three coach at the time was obviously Carlos Corberan. How did you find him as a head coach, and how much of an influence did Marcelo Bielsa have with that side? Because. Corberan's style of football was very similar to Bielsa's, which to fans highlighted how good of a coach Corberan was. You know, the under-23 and the first team in this is, is the same style of football. Because how was before, the was the first coach in under-23, but he was also the, I don't know, third, third or third coach in first team. So... We have exactly we training with first team. We had the first team on the training, and our style on the game was always how how the first team play. So I think was the this style uh, try to help us, or I don't know how to say, it, but uh, give us the ready when when we join to the first team. You know, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. was give like you this. A good yeah, 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 exactly. We did exactly the same what the first team do it. Exactly the same yeah. uh, drills, exercise. We we training like no, we training similar like first team. No, so was yeah. not was not different between the under twenty three training and the first team training. And not only was the training might have been the same, but just like the first team at the time, the under twenty threes were also very successful because in your first season at Leeds, you won the under twenty three PDL Northern League title. Was that a perfect introduction for you to life in England? Because it allowed you to play and adapt to English football, but also to do it at a good level because that Leeds youth team was still a very good side. Yeah, yeah, it's true because in the under-23, you, you can see a lot of sometimes the first team players after injury or if they don't play, they come to the under-23. It's, it's like this is in Leeds and also in the in the other team. So it was in this in, in this league in this and this year was very I think high quality because I I play on the second in Leeds and I see the difference between the second league or even the first first league in England was better I think you know so yeah exactly this helped me a lot and a lot learned me how I need to play because I need to change some things but this year was good for me. And fast forward into the end of your first season at Leeds, you made the progression to the first team and was named in the first team squad for the first time in a very eventful game against Aston Villa. But before we go into that Aston Villa game itself, how did you find out that you would be in the squad for that game and how did it make you feel knowing that you're going to step up into the first team for the first time? I remember this day because after training, uh, the one one coach, I think, tell me then I can stay after the training. And uh, one guy come to me who organize everything with the league and uh, no, you know who organize the the other things with the football. Yeah, yeah. And he asked me about the uh, what number I want to I want to take. Then I start thinking. Then maybe I on the bench on the weekend. You know, was was I think we play in Saturday and it was Friday. And after I see on the WhatsApp the group chat and I was I was in the squad. So was really I was really exciting. I after this call to my to my family and say, said this because you know was was going quick because I was in this I think five or six months and I was named on the bench in the championship so I was really excited in this day and to make me more more motivation to to still training like this or more yeah absolutely and you couldn't have picked a more eventful match to feature in as well could you because it was a, a game unlike any other I've personally seen Ellen Road before. Obviously, yeah. we all know what it was where Aston Villa was, we could say, given a goal, you know, whichever way you look at it. But what can you remember about that game? 
Mm. I think this game was. I just sit on the bench and I, I feel how I how how I play, you know, because the fans was the full stadium and also this game was was very. I say like aggressive because it happened a lot in this game, you know. This red card, the the click scored the goal, and after we give the goal to the Aston Villa because the one player of Aston Villa, uh, on, no, he, I think he was a foul and he was on the on, on the ground. And you no, know, happened a lot in this game. So I, I will remember this, I think, to end my life because it was the first game and <laughs> happened a lot, you know. <laughs> yeah, but um, unfortunately, you didn't manage to get on the pitch for that game against Villa. However, you did manage to feature in Leeds' first team squad for the rest of that 2018 19 season. And it was a year which saw Leeds narrowly miss out on promotion at the Premier League after losing a derby in the playoffs. And Although you'd only been at Leeds for a matter of months, how does it feel to lose out on promotion that season? Because it seems so likely that Leeds would be reaching the Premier League. Yeah, I was. I was on the. I remember when I put, when we play against Derby, I was on the also on the squad and also in the second game. You know, the, the, we were like a team was was very sad and exactly the players who who play all season because I know that the Leeds was the best from all the season. And just have maybe a little problem to the end of the season, and unlucky, unlucky we don't get this promotion. But you know, it was it was very it was very sad situation because you are working all season to get this promotion, and on the one game you lose everything. I was on the changing room after the game, and I see it was it was very very difficult situation. But but look, no, next season. <laughs> They, they they return they they return to the training they training uh, on the preseason and they make it so this just show how the players is good and the championship is not the championship is not enough for the Leeds. Yeah, and like you said, following that season, you were still once again very much in Leeds as first team plans for that season. And during the preseason of that 2019-20 campaign, you headed out to Australia with the Leeds squad for the pre-season tour, which was something to celebrate Leeds' 100-year anniversary. That first match of the tour was against one of Leeds' biggest rivals, Manchester United. And although it was a friendly, it was impossible for it to be a friendly because of the rivalry. And you came off the bench in that game after 60 minutes. So what was that like for you? Because in less than nine months, you'd gone from playing in the third division of Polish football to against Manchester United, yeah, you know how how you say uh, I was I going to the I go I gone to the Australia which uh, which first team uh, lead, and after I I play against Manchester United uh, six months before I play in third league in in the Polish. So you know I can I can't believe that uh, at this moment then I play against Manchester United and I I play in Leeds United in the in the first team. The all things going quick. But this preseason was very important for me, and I think I, I did very well because I play against. No, the first success was then I go to the Australia with, with the team, and after I play against United, and we play I think against Sydney, and I can't I I, I can't score a goal. So it was incred incredibly for me. Then then the quick the, the things going quick and also good because I was not like this. Then I just was there. I training or play, but I think I did this preseason very well. So, so really, this preseason was was very good for me. Yeah, you had a fantastic preseason, and like you touched on that goal against Western Sydney Wanderers, who Leeds played and uh, won two one in the end. Uh, a late Pablo Hernandez goal, I think, was the winner. But what can you remember about that goal? Because, like I said, it was a fantastic goal. And what was it like to start that match in all the way in Australia? Yeah, it was it was very nice match because also it was similar like against Manchester United. The stadium was full. I think it was the the new stadium, the yes. in Sydney. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. And I think Ad Adam Forshaw has uh, injury, and one day before the game or two, we we training and I start thinking then oh maybe I can start because you know I training with the first uh, first eleven and I just I just thinking like this and. This happened. I start and you know how I say the, the things going quick because I score. I think after ten minutes, so you know after this I fly. I I don't, I don't care. I just I just play and th this match I play really really good. You know I remember then 
to the end I, I change because I have problem with with the with the cost. But you know, it was was fantastic. It was a fantastic uh, moment in my life. Yeah, you played really well in them two games, and I felt that, like I said, you performed very well and put yourself in a good position, you know, to even challenge for that first team in the following season. But after that preseason, you know, did you feel the same? Did you feel happy going back to Leeds, thinking that you know I could I could challenge her? You know, you know, after after this preseason, I I start thinking then yeah I can really do it something here. I I start thinking like this then maybe I can I can. I can receive some chances on the championship and I, I just, I train the same and I start waiting for it, you know, and I was one day, one, one game on the bench, two, three, four, five, and I still don't get a chance, you know, so maybe I too quick, maybe I too quick start waiting for it, but, you know, I was maybe not angry, but a little bit, you know, I don't know how to say this fast thing, then I don't get this chance. Yeah. And I don't know after after what happened what happened. I f I don't remember good, but you know, I was I think six game on the bench a row. And after I was I have a little bit I think three or four games, I I wasn't be on the bench. And this from this, you know, the situation was a little hard. I training, I play in under twenty three, but I was sometimes on the bench, sometimes no, and it was a little difficult, you know. Just going back to that pre season tour in Australia, because although your performances were obviously very good, you were playing on the other side of the world and despite the huge distance, there were still thousands of Leeds United fans who made the trip over there to Australia to support the team for them games against Man United and Sydney. And before that trip were you aware of how big and how strong the Leeds United fan base was? Yeah, I know. I know because I, I when I just when I came to the first time on the Elland Road, I just see how what the fans can, you know. So I know how big is Leeds and how how the fans is amazing here, you know, because this all every game was a full stadium. Uh, you no, know, it was perfect. Uh, how how say this? In, it was perfect atmosphere or atmosphere on the stadium, mm. you know. And yeah. I see how the how the Leeds fans uh, love the Leeds and how they help the team. And after when I go to the Aston Villa and I was exactly on the bench, exactly on the pitch, I know how 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 this can help the the player, you know. When the fans mm. is always with you, so this in Australia don't surprise me a lot. Then. And the, the the fans no no it surprised me because Australia and England is too far. But you know, I know what the fans can. And that brings an end to section one of episode twenty five. Join us next week for section two where Mateus speaks about gaining promotion with Leeds in his first full season at the club, as well as Marcelo Bielsa's training methods and what he personally wants to achieve at Leeds United, despite admitting that he may take one or more loan before he becomes fully ready for Leeds' first team. Thanks for listening.